G'day mate, and welcome to Captain Industry with me, Jilly. Today, I want to cover docks. Docks and cargo ships, the backbone of every industrialist island. Uh, we'll be covering things like the fuel costs, as well as travel times, as well as how close you could put your dock to your neighbor's dock, so your dock doesn't block one another, because nobody likes a blocked dock. I uh, will also briefly cover contracts. Before we get into the really hard things, like who has the biggest dock on the island, I'd like to borrow a like. I'd like to borrow a like later on in the video when I'm explaining to you how it doesn't matter how big your dock is it's about how we'll use it if you're not happy by all means you can have your like back uh, don't forget there's also down the bottom a whole bunch of chapters should you need to rewatch this video you can just jump back and forward to the part that you need to rewatch. and also there is a playlist down in the description also in the pinned comments below if you want to see more capture industry tutorial videos so firstly let's talk about cargo ships themselves out on the world map out on the world map you're going to find exactly four cargo ships that's all you're going to be able to find and repair if you want any more than four you're going to have to go into the trading dock trading dock right here and you're going to have to buy extra cargo ships now the first one's going to cost you 600 construction parts and then you'll probably notice the price goes up to 720 but that's okay if you pace out the rhythm of your purchasing of cargo ships eventually the price will come down to just 600 again so don't get over eager buy up to many wait for the price to come back down also the unit cost will come back down from 24 down to just 20 20 is acceptable 24 is a little bit too much to pay for a bigger and better ship to go in your dock yes uh speaking of ships and docks um each ship will automatically enlarge itself to uh, meet its dock requirements. So a level two module, or well, a level two dock will require a cargo ship that has 12 seamen. A level four will require one that has 22 seamen. A level six will require 30 seamen to operate. And of course, a level eight will require 36 seamen, i.e. the bigger the dock or the bigger the ship, the more seamen required. On top of that, we need to talk about, uh, well, docks outright and fuel efficiency generally uh, after i have the research for the level four dock level four docks level eight docks level eight docks level eight docks uh, i generally upgrade my ships to the cargo depot level level eight uh just mainly for fuel efficiency which we should get into right now so um fuel efficiency to start with every single boat is we're going to use 60 diesel per round trip Okay, now that is assuming it doesn't actually have any cargo modules. If we add in some cargo modules, every single time I add another module, it's going to add another 30 diesel to the consumption, which means a fully laden level two ship will require 120 diesel, but a level uh, level four is going to require 180 diesel for twice the diesel cost of what we started at, uh, being now we're up to 240. I could be carrying uh, six modules instead and then of course our level eight dock uh, with our level eight ship with all the seamen in the world uh, of course it's going to need 300 diesel per round trip so i've got some other good news for you uh the latest patch the latest patch made the tri ships travel faster also they now carry twice as much cargo so being the fact that it's just three months travel time to leave and come back it probably means that um your ships are going to actually be carrying a lot more and traveling a lot less than they used to because like i said they doubled the cargo capacity so we should place it talk about dock placement yes let's get a dock placement so between your uh left edge of one dock and the left edge of the next dock you're going to want for a level two or a level four you're gonna want 75 tiles 75 tiles gap uh between this left hand side and this left hand side is going to be the absolute minimum to get your docks as close to one another as possible now there's some good news and some bad news mainly the bad news uh, a level two dock you can upgrade to a level four a level four dock you cannot upgrade to a level six a level six where are we uh we can definitely upgrade to a level eight so if you want to go from a four to a six to an eight you're gonna have to demolish and rebuild the next bit of bad news is is uh the gap between a the left hand side of a six or an eight and the left hand side of a six and eight is no longer 75 tiles it's 80 tiles so um there's a good chance during your upgrade process unless you've pre-planned and pre-spaced out your docks so your dock was not close too close to your neighbor's dock and you end up blocking your neighbor's dock um you're probably going to have to uh rearrange your shoreline to fit in more docks uh the other thing i will tell you right now if you want to cheat this measurement is we grab a larger storage container these are 10 tiles in size uh so if i put three of them back to back to back that is 30 tiles if i take a medium smallish container and we pop that right there that is five tiles which means that is a 35 tile gap right there if i grab a large cargo dock a number eight rotate you around and line you up there oh look it 
lines up perfectly with the edge of that storage container. That is your cheap method. That is your cheap method between one dock and the other. If you have a 35 tile gap, then you can fit in the next dock perfectly. But um, that's between them, between them, between the left side and the left side. Don't forget, it is 80 tiles. So uh, with dock placement covered, we should probably talk about uh, the cargo capacity of ships themselves. So uh, with, like I said, with the recent patch, they now carry twice as much. So now we have liquid storage is going to carry 440 units. And of course, solid storage or unit storage is going to carry 368 piece. Also, when it comes to our modules, uh, different modules have different loading and unloading times. So go on, talking about liquid, uh, that's being 440 carry capacity per module on the ship a small fluid module will only well will only unload at a rate of 110 which means it's going to take four months to fully unload the ship on top of that uh when it does the unloading it only has carry capacity of internal storage of two well half 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 the amount the ship can carry so you need to make sure you pump that material straight out of the actual unit well, the, the, the fluid modules the small modules you need to make sure that material has a has room to leave so the ship can empty so the ship can leave again uh same as going to apply to the small module be it loose or unit module in all these cases they're going to take four months to unload and in all these cases they only going to have enough inventory space to fit half one of these slots in here when we go upgrade to the medium modules the medium modules are going to move at 220 items per minute being per month which means that we're going to unload the ship in two months on top of that they have enough an internal buffer they can actually move the whole contents of the ship into their internal buffer which means you don't have to make sure they have somewhere to empty straight away but obviously you probably want them to empty out straight away so you can use that material rather than leaving it in the internal buffer uh but yes it does mean that they're going to take two months too much to two months to completely empty and then finally we have the large modules large modules are op they uh, can completely unload the ship in one month on top of that they have an internal buffer capacity of twice the amount that fits in the ship so they can actually hold two months or two loads into in their internal buffer it's very very important to have an extra extra load hanging around in your internal buffer and uh yes they can completely unload the ship in 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 one month all right on top of that our boats our boats have a three month turnaround so between the time they leave and the time they come back it's going to take them three months to disappear and come back plus then of course we have the uh, loading and unloading time if we start at the small end the small end being four months it's going to take you a seven month minimum turnaround the medium modules means we're going to have three months of travel plus two months worth of loading or unloading which means it's going to take you five months five months worth of turnaround and then of course the large modules because they're super super fast they'll have that ship in done and out back at the docks within a month with the three months worth of travel time that's going to mean that this particular setup can have that ship back out to sea uh four months four months from the day it leaves it could pop back unload completely and leave once again so something else I should mention is the boats down consume a little bit more diesel, depending on the ship, depending on the ship, somewhere between a little bit and a lot more diesel than they did previously, but by the same token, they do carry twice the amount of material. So there is a good chance that you don't need your ships leaving uh, nearly as often as you used to. And the devs are giving you a couple of options to save a little bit of diesel. First off, we have a reduced ship speed and save fuel option this is toggleable on a per ship basis so i can turn it on for one ship and off for another um it will mean that the ships now take twice as long travel but they will also save 30 percent of the fuel so it's going to definitely cut back on their fuel consumption it brings it sort of in line with where it used to be prior to this patch coming out oh wow well, prior to this patch prior to this patch uh and at the same time there is another fuel saver we can do which is in the captain's office in the industrial edicts there is a ship fuel saver for one uni which makes ships save another 10 percent diesel now this does stack with the previous one on top of that but i do want to mention that there is a also the vehicle fuel saver for one uni that saves 15 percent diesel on the vehicles now unless you're in the very very late game with many many cargo ships popping in and out doing a lot of contracts you're probably going to find this is not a very good spend of your uni you'd probably be better off much better off with the vehicle fuel saver uh don't forget you can always do the uh, reduced speed to save yourself diesel or depends on how quickly you need to turn items around but of course they do stack so we can where are you so we can have 10 percent saved straight away and then of course i can turn this on to uh save another 30 percent on top of that so we can definitely stack our savings 
so before I get into contracts, which we mentioned just briefly previously, uh, I, I, I should ask, I should ask, can I keep that like I mentioned earlier? Um, we, we've spoken about a couple of things. We've gone through the ships, the storage, the fuel costs, as well as the travel times, uh, the unloading times, the, the, the gap between your neighbor, your dock and your neighbor's dock, because like I said, nobody likes a blocked dock. Um, but I just want to confirm that, can I keep the like? Um, and also suggest that if you found the video helpful, you found the, you find these Captain Ministry tutorial videos helpful and you'd like to see more of them maybe consider clicking the subscribe button at the same time so uh contracts 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 are a very very good way to uh extend your play time if we look in the contracts there's a couple of things we need to talk about uh very very quickly so first thing is your establishment fee you're gonna have a one-off establishment fee for a uni cost uh, actually let's talk through the different contracts and the module sizes so modules uh i'm gonna show you each one of these on the screen for just a moment just a moment uh i have unlocked every single single contract that is available in the game so this is a complete list as of well date of recording um of course games in early access maybe we'll add some more maybe uh maybe the devs will tweak some more but there is a number of contracts out there now as i said there are three uni costs for every single contract uh the first one is the establishment cost this is like a one-off bribe it's a one-off bribe to the captain of the other island this is to make sure that you can open a trade negotiation um at which point they ask for a large donation of uni at which point you need to click the button and then you have the option of uh running that particular contract on top of that there is two other uni costs you need to consider one is going to be a monthly cost you're going to end up paying a certain amount of uni every month that is to keep the other captain of the other island very happy and very pleased with your performance even though he doesn't have to do anything it's it's about keeping those communication lines open uh, and of course then there is another uni cost once again and this is on a per ship basis so each time your ship leaves goes to the other island completes the um the 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 trade with the other settlement and then comes back um you need to pay this unit cost this unit cost goes directly to the dock workers on the other island to make sure that they don't drop and damage any of the items that they're unloading and any of the items that are loading on your ship it's, it's a very important uh method of uh ensuring everybody's safety yes yes so look what can i say union bosses uh, appreciate a good amount of uni bribes every now and then now uh contracts contracts very very much do extend your gameplay you can do a certain amount on the game but um if you start running low on some resources contracts are definitely a, a good way of looking at extending your playtime. um so I have a couple in my go-to list, a couple in my go-to list that I really like getting as early as possible. Uh, my number one is, of course, uh, slag for sale water. Yes, I could have the trucks pick up the slag and drop the slag in the sea, and that's perfectly acceptable. Or I could automate it with a whole bunch of belts, move all my slag out to a dock, load it into a ship, ship it off somewhere else, and get back sour water. Sour water is a waste product, no disagreeing, but I can turn sour water with a sour water stripper into ammonia ammonia i have a couple of options one i can turn it of course into fertilizer the other option is i can split it into hydrogen and nitrogen the nitrogen of course i can vent for zero pollution and the hydrogen i can burn if i'm burning the hydrogen um i can turn that into power for free so i can get rid of a waste product and potentially get back free power very very good trade right there uh, another one i really really like is glass for coal um glass is very very easy to make requiring sand like mostly sand and you should have plenty of sand and if you don't have plenty of sand you've probably got plenty of rock that you could crush into sand to get coal coal is very important for well smelting the glass to start with plus the iron plus the copper plus everything else uh, at the same time you can get um a certain amount of power from coal i hear i hear it's very good for burning to turn water into steam to get power which then you can use to run factories very very good contracts one of my uh one of my uh top on my list uh the other one is uh, of course brand new uh, no this is the brand new one another one is solar cells solar cells for quartz quartz is actually very hard to mine on the world map costs a good amount of uni for not a lot of quartz uh doing a contract can vastly upgrade the amount of quartz you can get back on a monthly basis for taking uh, about mm, 30 percent 30 percent 40 percent of the quartz you're bringing in and turning it into solar cells the rest of it is um, potentially free to you and this is how most of the contracts work most of the contracts are going to require you to spend some sort of amount of people unity power pe people maintenance 
power and resources to then complete the trade by trading an item for an item. My number one actual contract I go for is the Vehicle Parts 2 for crude oil because although it has a unit cost of 0.3 per month and a very high uni cost of 4.6 per ship uh, with an establishment fee of 18 uni which we're going to click on really quickly um, when we break that down to a per month basis over say seven months it means rather than me needing 200 vehicle uh, 205 vehicle parts over seven months it means it's just 29 parts also my crude oil over seven months is uh 440 crude oil which is a lot of crude oil in fact if i head out to the world map very quickly and I look at my local, local crude oil rig that is a level 16 it is fully upgraded for 6.41 uni don't I don't know why there's a one on there we'll call it a rounding error um I'm only gonna get three uh, 432 crude oil per month which is not an awful lot considering well actually it is an awful lot it is an awful lot but the contract I was just talking about would do 440 yes also this is going to run out in 200 years um contracts never ever run out i could keep doing this forever there is infinite amount of crude oil for my infinite amount of vehicle parts and i'm going to have a flat unit cost of uh, 0.3 per month with a cost every seven months let's say for my ship popping out and completing this trade now to get the 29 vehicle parts this is my assembly right here i need three doing vehicle parts one to have five doing vehicle parts two which we can assign a contract assign that particular contract and instantly load onto or oh, into this module from the storage container and slowly load onto the ship which will take a minute will take a minute or two the good news is the ship will leave as soon as it has the required contract amount being 205 and then it'll disappear and i'll come back with um well what was the amount of oil it was uh 380 so 3080 divided by seven modules left over means every single module comes back Oop. Every single module comes back fully loaded. And this is how we set up a contract ship. A contract ship requires that the ship be able to carry all the different items required to complete that contract. So if we go back into whoop, uh, back into this for a second, and we say a level, let's go with a level four. A level, actually, let's keep things simple. Level two, level two. If I want to do a level two, uh, being glass for coal, uh, that would be, what, one module? One module for glass and two modules no one for coal one for glass nice and simple nice and simple yeah because only two module ship if we take it up to the higher level it's now one for glass and three for coal and this is how you need to set up your ships uh actually let's just do that really quickly let's go establish that and let's go to our four module ship which is all the way over here and remove all those and we would want a loose module uh, I want three of those and a unit module and assign a contract. It would be this particular contract and we'll see 360 for 630. Uh, that is going to be how that contract is set up. Oh, that was a four module. Uh, where are we? Glass 411 for 720. Well, we'll call that rounding errors. But yes, uh, if loaded that way, that would be the contract 360. Okay, it's limited the ship for some reason. Uh, Oh no, 360 is the amount that they carry now. Yeah. Uh, like I said, they just changed everything. And boom, ship is gone. Ship will be back in, I don't know, however, months, however many months it said it was going to be. Um, it'll be three months worth of travel time. And if we take four months to unload it, because I'm using all small modules, they cost the least amount of maintenance, they cost the least amount of people, and the least amount of power. Once we've got the ship unloaded, we will have 3,000 crude oil to play with over the next seven months. Like I said, contracts are very, very powerful uh, and very, very efficient when it comes to uni costs. That is a lot of crude oil you might also notice that this already has 155 parts because we fully loaded it with 360 and then we only traded off 205 so we came back with a whole bunch of construction parts that are pre-loaded ready to go which means as soon as this gets to 205 and everything else is empty technically it could leave anyway with all that said this is where i'm going to end this quick little tutorial video on cargo ships cargo ships and contracts and all that sort of things i do hope you guys enjoyed it i do hope you find that your dock is uh large enough to make sure that you don't block your partner's dock because um well 
nobody likes a blocked dock. Uh, at the same time, consider giving the video a like if you haven't already, and consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, there is a playlist down in the description below, also on your screen right about now, for, well, more Captain Ministry tutorial videos. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Do hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the very next video. Right, bye.